This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter on a special recording this week, a Sunday afternoon recording because there's a lot of stuff going on here in the Pittsburgh area around some of our other shows. Uh, so we're getting a little bit of an early discussion, but this is the awesome cast episode 390. Mike Sorg, a video producer, podcaster here in the Pittsburgh area, Sorgatron Media Studios. I can't remember if I said that part because it's Sunday and I don't understand how to podcast on Sunday. But with us, we got the crew with us. First of all, he is the gadget guru with Big Bank International Esquire. It is John Chichilla. How's it going? We should have done something special where it like made us look like we traveled back to the past to bring. Well, just the just the fact that there's sun <laughs> coming in the window is 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 I thought enough of a change <laughs> over here. Uh, but you know, I mean, what you want to wear like old fancy hats? Well, well I was just, just thinking like if you could you make just it. Just look... want to wear a jaunty hat. Oh, that'd be great. Or or say we're broadcasting from California, where it's still sunny on, the, on yeah, Tuesday exactly. evening. <laughs> We, we could we could have definitely. Used... I could mess with me because there are <laughs> ways for us to kind of rebroadcast. And the podcast dog is back. If you're on video, uh, Wicked is hanging out and out just, of out of my ear, just checking out the back of people's heads. I'm sure he'll bark at somebody at the taco stand sooner or later because he likes to do that. He looks like he's really interested in something out there right now. So also with us is the sales and marketing director at the Scarehouse. Hey, guys. and fresh off a plane, more or less from uh, St. Louis, Louis at Transworld. Oh yeah, is Looking Katie Dudas stuff? Yeah, you saw that clown, the bigot clown. There's a lot with of clown. Kid. You saw a lot of the clown with the kid. Oh yeah, if you you saw that, that's where I was. How creepy is that in person? Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's really big. Like it's t- it's taller than I am. That's awesome. So and the great good. part is, if it's been uh, like memed around, like now, by the time it pops up in a haunted house, they're gonna forget about. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so uh but how was your trip or are we talking about that here later in the show uh no we, well you were you sent me on a mission to find raspberry I did, pies I and did. i found none none are none. they just well hidden or they're just they, you don't think they're in use not in use yeah i mean it's 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 other little techie things but no seems like it's more mechanical probably yeah. right yeah yeah so on this level of things so and it's mostly haunted houses like is there a lot of escape room kind of action yes. going now, on there now so. there oh gosh now there are and now it's a big section that's the escape cool rooms. thing yeah they're hip and cool a mm. little bit of a talk about axe throwing did, what? Did what? They, like the the <laughs> escape room stuff was it like merch that you could purchase like to use in your escape room? Like props. Or, oh yeah, you could uh, buy okay. actual whole escape rooms too. That that was the interesting thing. I, I know someone that's that's worked on some escape room tech and he's like, the money isn't necessarily all in running your own escape room. It's in designing all the cool stuff that goes in there. Yeah. Building it, duplicating it. And then selling it, well, reselling the concept. I think that's the same in the high industry because uh, I know Katie's talked to a lot of people on Scarehouse podcast in that industry that are just props makers and sellers, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, like, even one guy didn't one guy have like an entirely turnkey haunted house that he was selling? Yeah, you can buy a whole haunted house. You can buy a whole escape rooms. Like yeah, you, that was part of the things where you would you would have whole big tests. You'd have test rooms, and then if you want to buy it, it's like X amount of dollars on the outside. Yeah. Or, yeah, so it's pretty. I mean, so if you're just like, I have money and I want a haunted house. Yeah. Instead of you know, I mean, I mean, Scarehouse kind of creates their own, mm-hmm. right? But if somebody's like, I just want to put one here, mm-hmm. or like, I want to live in one and turn okay. my house into a haunted house. If you want to, why not? If you want to, if <laughs> sure. So creepy. Um, but no. kind of weird for like Thanksgiving dinner and <laughs> or awesome. House. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I mean, my there's zombie a, turkey. Hey, there's a guy down here a couple blocks away that drives a hearse, has a casket in his front yard, like like all year round. Like this dude's like Halloween all year round, and we have some. I think Missy has some has some friends that do the same thing where they have Halloween decorations up 
Paul, you're in in your neighborhood, by the way. Hmm. Uh, so like like this is like some people live the every day is Halloween thing, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it is, it is kind of cool when you're rolling with it, right? But anyways, hey, we'll get into some awesome things in a moment, but please check out everything at AwesomeCast.com at AwesomeCast on the Twitter or Facebook. Uh, the AwesomeCast Facebook group is a good place where people are sharing a lot of things. we got some fun stuff that we're going to be getting into here later in the show. Contributed by people that are part of the network, been on the show, just contributing, um, uh, fans of the show, and thank you so much for everybody that's been doing that. You can subscribe to the show on audio on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Music Podcast, as well as the video versions over on the YouTube and the Facebook page for the awesome cast and we are typically live every tuesday at live dot i'm sorry we're typically live every tuesday at that facebook page uh for awesome cast at 7 p.m eastern time also shout out to our friends rivers where they are streaming us saturday mornings at 9 a.m also check out the third sunday of the month i drop in for the awesome thing of the month uh to talk some ch- tech with them over there and the 405 media.com streaming us weekdays at 9 a.m pacific noon eastern time speaking of those time zones and uh also we do invite you if you are in the pittsburgh area and want to be part of our studio audience uh, again typically on tuesdays please hit us up on the email awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com so we can make sure there's some room for you and maybe enough pizza as well from our good friends at slice on broadway i uh, will save a seat from you let us know and hang out i with some audience with somebody to applause other than missy missy's lone clapping sometimes <laughs> We make her clap. Uh, we do make her clap. <laughs> but anyways, uh, thank you to our friends. And, and if you want to advertise with the show, please hit us up. Awesomecast at SorgatronMedia.com as well. And thank you to our supporters, Patreon.com slash Awesomecast. Our friends at the $5 coffee club level where we talk about some new uses we've been having with Duet Display in video production. And what do we... T- do, do we, we Katie kind of railed about this clown thing that yes. happened on the internet and, and trans world and, yes. and, and memeing and everything. Uh, so get her true thoughts on that. As well as uh, thank you at our $1 fan of the show level, uh, Mike V. Door Show on the Twitter. Uh, again, please, you can support us. Help keep the lights on here. A lot of uh, cool things going on there at uh, patreon.com slash awesome cast you get to hear me swear this week <laughs> was there swearing did oh you, yeah you, i dropped an f-bomb in there you man you did drop an f-bomb <laughs> we try to keep it clean here There's only a couple people that drop an s-bomb every once in a while it's been a long day but, but she, and, and a delayed flight and and <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get into our awesome things of the week I'll go with you first katie hi it's me i have Something an awesome thing. nice and fun and emoji licious yeah okay so um Apple has proposed some new uh, accessibility emojis, which is pretty darn cool. Mm. Um, this is the article links to Unicode's, um, the actual proposal from Apple. So you can kind of see, it, which I thought the super cool thing about this is you can see the proposed emojis, why they're proposing them, and just like some of the info behind the scenes mm. of Emoji World. And it's uh, it, for the people on audio, it's like people with canes. There's a, mm-hmm. there's a, a helper dog. Um, there's a, you know, pointing to your, is this sign language or is this? that would be deaf or hard of hearing that's for hard of hearing Mm -hmm. that's like hey i'm hard of hearing there's one with a hearing aid uh Mm -hmm. there's a wheelchair version um that's cool yeah so it's really opening it up because i mean there's there's never been anything like that before no no so this is just a so and this is just to to kind of explain uh, uh, you know kind of a visual explainers or something along with this yeah like i said this is this is really neat and then you get down into there you can look into the search terms Mm -hmm. for emojis like how many it's been you know google on bing on youtube um looking up these different types of um pictures and it's it's really it's really neat like i I thought the article as a whole was pretty darn cool and you can see google trend web and image search for bicep prosthetic absolutely so they're they're kind of support it's essentially like a proposal and they're supporting it with data so you get to see the data behind the proposed emojis Mm mm-hmm Cool. So is there? Any, so this will probably. I think once a year they they unreal, un, unveil some new ones, mm-hmm. right? So this is, this is potentially going to be part of that when it yeah, comes around, which is really cool. I think. Awesome. I think that, I think this is a great idea, and I, I'm I'm I was surprised that these weren't already in yeah. mm-hmm. in there. Um, so I think this is great. You ever done like a, a an emoji search, like like just rolling through and to see like what's popped up lately or anything? Like there's so many. It seems like there, there was a lot before. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of hard to be like, okay, what's what's in there? Although the suggestions help. Yes. That's yes. been really awesome. I like that. Do, like I said, I like wrote, wrote like world or planet or something and, uh, and and it popped up the planet thing. It was just like, oh, yeah, of course that's in there, right? But you don't think about that. You kind of have to train yourself in order for that to be a thing. So it's interesting. 
Chillos, what's your uh, awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week is an is a product slash app called and it's called Robo Killer. But I, I want to take the conversation a little beyond just just the app. So um, so there's an app. It's called Robo Killer. I think we've talked on this show before about the guy that created. Did we talk about the guy that created the callback for spam and um, people trying oh, to yeah, get yeah. trying people trying to extort money from the elderly and whatnot yeah, saying you know yeah. there's a warrant out for your arrest you need to go buy five hundred dollars worth of target gift cards and give us the codes off the back blah, blah, blah. oh my gosh i'm gonna start doing that. i'm gonna start <laughs> wow. calling people you're gonna go to jail or give me some target gift cards <laughs> um so so the one guy a, a while back created this program that i think was using google voice to loop back and he just flooded these call centers with garbage so that they couldn't make calls Mm -hmm. and cause all these people pain well robo killer is an app that does just that um they have over two hundred thousand numbers in their spam library so if you get a phone call from that number um you'll get a notification letting you know that, that that you got the call but your phone will never ring and it'll be blocked um robo killer costs about $2.99 $2.99 per month or $24.99 a year. Um, I use, and there, there's a number of these. You can get um, call blocking apps from AT&T and Verizon. There's one called Trap Call. Um, I use one that's called Umail, which actually also overtakes your voicemail, which I really like. Um, and it was around before, you know, voice to text was built right in to the device and things of that nature. But I... I probably get about three or four spam calls per day during the week. Wow. Um, I, I just put everything. My phone is just so not a phone anymore that it's just on do not disturb. And if they don't leave a, a message, I don't know. Yeah. You know. Um, but as soon as I do, I throw a block on it. I don't know how much that helps. as many numbers as these guys have and the spoofing. But... Um, you know, I, I just don't notice. It, it's just I feel like I feel like phones have just been completely um, de-emphasized because of stuff like this. So, so I do want to give this this uh, Robo Killer a try. Hope I'm hoping, and I, I didn't get time before the show to see if they have like a free trial or mm-hmm. or whatnot because I would be interested in it. Umail, I really like because they do a number of things. They can do. They can do voicemail depending on who the person is. You can actually do assigned voicemail intros. And, and you mail, is it like the word? Y-O-U-M-A-I-L. Okay. Um, they do, they can do custom voicemails um, where you could set up like, if you know you have, you have, say you have a client list, but then you have a family list, you could leave when the voicemail picks up, it can sound different for your phone number. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry. Um, they do the spam notif- spam blocking and notification um, all for free. In fact, they even have one. If, if you, like I use the intelligent assistant or whatever it's called for my voicemail. So if you have your name and your caller ID, or I know your, your name and it's in my, it's in my um, address book, it'll say, hello, Michael, John's not available right now to take your call. Please leave a message. Like it, it can look at caller ID and your contact list mm-hmm. and, and speak intelligently about who's calling. So that's awesome. Uh, I, that's another problem I have is, is the business lines. Mm-hmm. You know, we're trying to do some things with sales and services and for people to react to it, you know, to call us and, you know, because some business you have to deal with that way. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's infectious because we just end up with more spammers and, you know, things like that. So it's 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 interesting, mm-hmm. it, it, and and if this kind of lines that up a little bit, that that that's co- that's kind of cool. Yep. So I, I'm interested to give this one a try. I'd urge anyone that that gets even one or two calls here and there to look into these services. Mm-hmm. Some of them are extremely cheap or free, um, and I feel like the more we contribute to this, it may not limit the number of people trying to spam, but it it increases the catalog of numbers that they know about. So then we can try to hopefully expand the, that, that blocking list and then less people are, are annoyed with nuisance calling. Awesome. Recover your phones. (laughs) 
Well, mine is, uh, I'm a little late to the game, but uh, I finally got around to uh, picking up a new iPhone, and I went with the 8. Um, I had a lot of thinking about this, and I know you guys got the uh, 10. Um, I did also ask our friend at uh, the Apple store if, they're, if they get zapped every time they say the X instead of the 10. Uh, if there's a role on that, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, it, I, I decided I needed to go, like, I, I wanted the bigger phone. Like that was kind of my, my idea going into this round of upgrades was I wanted to get that more real estate to do more things on here. Right. Because again, it's business, it's video, it's the camera. Katie, you're not kidding about the camera upgrade from a 6S to this. It's yeah, like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at these and I'm like, like I took some pictures, uh, Saturday night at the uh, RWA wrestling show and just seeing the, the, the colors pop on it is, is, and then you go back through your camera roll and you're just like, Oh, interesting. So <laughs> you got the plus, I got the plus. So you didn't just An get the eight, eight plus. You got the plus. I got the eight plus and eight and a little more. Eight and a little mm. more, exactly. And as, even as it is, I did uh, team viewer to, to log into my computer to, to, to upload some files from last night, and just being able to pull that sideways and it and it like fills your screen with my desktop in that little bit of a bigger screen is so much more valuable to me. And I and I thought about the situations I'm going to be in, like you know I'm in the middle of a field having to deal with this stuff, you know, uh, shooting like Baja and Formula and things like that. I don't want to be figuring out the new ways to use my phone without a button. So, and, and I, and it's the same power too. It's the same chip in these. I All three of them X. have the same, all chip. three of them are the same. So, so it's the same, same power wise, different memory, different memory on board memory. You mean? Yeah. Okay. What, which one has more? I think the 10, the 10 has more. Well, it's doing more. It's doing the face recognition. Yeah. It needs to kind of build that in. Right. Um, and it's and again, it, it's bumping me up two generations plus the screen size. Fortnite runs tremendous on this thing, <laughs> by the way. Been playing a lot of those. Also, my best my best run of Fortnite was on my iPad Pro, the uh, 12 inch. It looks it plays like a dream on there. It, mm-hmm. It's it's like maybe comparable to when we were playing on PS4 the other night. If you uh, get, graphics it, wise, it, it, I'm interested. So if you ever get a chance and are sitting side by side with someone with an iPad nine or the new pro yeah the new pro with the new um screen where it's what is like the refresh rates independent okay like it can do a bunch of crazy things with the refresh has rate. there been a second 12 inch at this point yes it's hard to keep up yes there's a second like even, even we're looking at the ipad that missy got yesterday and it just says ipad and it's like what's well, not an ipad air but are they called air anymore no, and it's they're the not 2017 so yeah it's like the 2017 and it doesn't say anything it just says ipad it has a model number it says cellular and it says 9.7 inch and i was like Ooh, we're gonna look at the model number to figure out what exactly it is like for all we know it's the ones that have been sitting there for three years at at&t they gave us for a buck you know that they could be mm-hmm. um but I, so far i'm really happy with this decision over like i would love to play with and maybe missy will begin the uh 10 so we can we, we can have that on hand to play with as well you can throw a duet display on it exactly it right as oh a, yeah as another one oh yeah watching watching video on this is amazing um it's it's that bridge um that bridge between um um having a phone and having an ipad like which which is what i kind of expected um, you know, I, I'm more apt to do things. I would wait till I got my hands on an iPad to do mm-hmm. because of this, um, things like, you know, Apple news, even or reading comic books will, will be a lot easier reading in general will be on uh, easier on this. Um, so, uh, I, I definitely recommend, I was always worried about it being a little too big. Um, and I got my OtterBox today. I went OtterBox because I actually got Apple care this time. So I'm not as scared of going through horrible, horrible situations like they did with my success. Uh, and toilets. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so uh, no, I'm really happy with the decision. And uh, maybe the um, X11, 12 version uh, will be will be kind of doing this. I don't know. I just feel like it's too mission critical for me to be playing with a brand brand new technology like that. You do know that the iPhone 10's screen is technically larger. It's taller. It's five. It's five point eight inches corner to corner yeah, versus five point five. That's it, it's. I mean it, w- and that's what made feels me. Feels larger. It feels it feels larger because the encasement of the device, because it's not edge 
to add, there's an ice set there and at you put everything next to each other <laughs> and, and, and turn all the screens on and <laughs> but if you line them up if yeah. you line them up one the active screen yeah. real estate um yeah. the thing that i'm totally jealous about is the eight when you rotate the screen, the whole UI changes. Like yeah, your iPad. That, I forgot that this was a thing. That's... Or even when you do this, like when you go mm-hmm. sideways and like Messenger, it turns into like iPad Messenger. And that's why I do not understand why they did not do that on, on the 10. 10. And yeah. I'm hoping with, Aww. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping with the with <laughs> some of the future, because one oh, of the things. Oh, look what I can do. You guys can make animojis, but look at me. My icons are going all over the place. <laughs> the, the one thing I'm hoping they do with IO, iOS 12? 12 is add that feature to the 10. Mm-hmm. The other thing is learning like what, what apps do that and mm-hmm. like where is it like, oh, I need to kick this way for, for, for uh, you know, doing that. Yeah, it, like I'm still kind of weirded out on like Messenger when it pops up sideways like this, right? So um, I still can't get used to the keyboard a lot of times when it's sideways sideways yeah yeah and there's more of it on this and and more to cover i'm using the double click and half your screen to reach a lot more okay yeah i got big hands so like i didn't need to use it all that much i swipe on on ours it's you swipe down on the bottom portion with the menu bar and i i i used i'll be honest with you i used that on the regular like six Mm -hmm. like i couldn't i couldn't get my finger because yeah. I, I go one handed a lot, so I couldn't get my yeah, thumb up. Like, to the again, upper I got corner. I got a pretty big mitt. So yeah. Like it's like finally it's like a phone that I can't grasp around, right? So Well, I finally broke down and did one of the little doohickeys on the back. The little popped out doohickeys. Yeah. yeah. Do you I, like that? I love it. I didn't think I was gonna like it so much, but it's just like because I the way I had to place it a little higher because I think most people have it down here, but we tend to use the gorilla pod. I have to put it across here for like live mm-hmm. and stuff. So this is up a little bit higher. But just having that little bit more of a hold on things carly nice. uses the ring like hers has yeah. a ring that pops out and it's nice i don't know if i could get away with having the ring thing but i i like that yeah and it like, pops in so i'm pointing out that uh that i got a case that i can't use the wireless uh charging though yeah yeah so but I, I don't know if i was really going to get too big into that um i do need a tip chilla for uh bluetooth headphones because mine are dying that I picked up for fifteen bucks at Fye AirPods. It just no. There's, the, okay. There is only okay. One. Wait, 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 wait. Let me qualify this. That do not cost me one hundred and fifty dollars. What's the way? Kraus? Ask Kraus. Yeah, he, Kraus has, those, Kraus he has, has those. I need to look back through the picks through the last year. On yeah, awesome Kraus cast. gets the ones that are like the twenty dollar, and they they sound decent. I mean, I'm. I mean, I, I guess. I guess the answer is I should go to awesomecast.com, uh, type in Bluetooth <laughs> yes. headphones, and start going through you guys' reviews. Yes, uh, is is one way that we can do that, which is something I encourage everybody else to do uh, as well. So whatever you're looking for, because we talk about a lot of those things: your your, your Amazon Echoes, your Google Homes, your uh, uh, Mophies, and, and and things like that. You know, it's. I, I figured I'm pretty sure the Mophie I got for the 5s was a lot cheaper and. Uh, economical solution to um, extending that life than getting an actual battery replacement and opening the thing up. So we'll see. That'll be the test run on that one. <laughs> so, all right. Well, anyway, speaking of Halo, I give a shout out of to our friends of Slice on Broadway. Uh, SliceonBroadway.com. The OG, the original right here up the road uh, on the tracks here in Beachview, as well as their locations in Carnegie, PA, uh, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Opening days in like just over a week from now, I believe. So you guys get your slice as you're going down to the Pirates game. And of course, over in the East End, uh, East Liberty, is their newest location. Um, I saw them thanking their customers the other day for the, the, ex- the amazing expansion they've had. We had somebody just in here the other day saying they're the best p- pizza in Pittsburgh. Don't even mess around. Um, I know. I think City Pittsburgh is doing their pizza week. Uh, so hopefully get some information on that if they're doing any voting on best pizza of Pittsburgh for the year or anything like that. Uh, so thank you so much for them for supporting the show, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com. All right, we had a lot of stuff uh, going on, uh, and what's up? I would love people hopping into our weirdly scheduled uh, uh, show today. What's up, Brian? What's up, Alex? On the West Coast? What's up, Wheels? Uh, <laughs> Wheel Wheels gave me my mirror um, thing, and he's, he's saying he has a pair of uh, uh, Bluetooth headphones if I want them. Uh, so hey, I, I'm willing to give anything a shot, man. 
Uh, I just know like mine stopped working on one side. So I'm every time I need to make a phone call, it's like just one ear at this point. It works well for the one ear, but this is uh, something I think all of us are considering at this point. But uh, Bobby Cherry uh, shared a video for the um, phone compatible shower curtain, guys. <laughs> So, you know, I if you, if you need awesome. to get your stuff done, you want to watch Netflix or you want to just, you know, do other things in, while in the shower. Uh, it, there, so basically, it's a, it's a shower curtain. It's a clear shower curtain. It has pockets on the outside as big as iPads, as small as iPhones. And, and so so they're, 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 they're safe from, from, you know, the water and, and you can touch screen through the, the, the plastic itself. You know, just like if you had one of those bags, like, you know, when you're at Kennywood at the... Uh, Pittsburgh Plunge, right? Uh, so we use one at the beach. I mean, it works. Use one at the beach. Like, like one of those. It's like has. Yeah, like yeah. A, That's it, why I saw it was on Thailand. Like, like the ones that are basically a bag, like a Ziploc bag with mm-hmm. a little plastic top to it mm-hmm. that you strap to yourself, so you could go scuba diving with your phone, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that, that was a pretty cool concept. It, 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 it's if you really, absolutely can't be separated from your phone for more than the five minutes to wash your butt. Um, then this is apparently the shower curtain for you. Uh, Katie, are you getting one? I do. I do watch, uh, or listen to TV in the, in the shower a lot, especially like on the weekends and golden girls and stuff. Oh, and yeah. Simpsons, Simpsons and Golden Girls. Simpsons and Golden thing. Girls in the shower. Okay. I got <laughs> that you. That would work. Yeah. <laughs> then you got a clear shower curtain. It doesn't work in every household. That's true too. <laughs> That's like, true too. Hey. What's up? Uh, but see, but see, I feel like it would be totally fun to use one of these and then just have everything going all the time like <laughs> take all my old devices throw them in this thing it's like a what it was so you're like you're like the guy from Watchmen that has all the TVs but it's all your old iPads running like every news channel yeah, like, like abs- I think it would be so much fun all on closed caption or all just <laughs> going at the same time right but uh no that's that's one way to do it so uh, but no, check that out. I, I, I didn't see a link to buy it, but I'm sure if you see iPhone uh, shower curtain, it'll, it'll come up fine. Now there's a weird um, owl carvings that are popping up in my feed. So we're going to turn those videos off. Uh, mm. So this is the one. I, 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 told, I told you guys about this one a little bit earlier. Um, let me get this. Hold on. We got to mute our other thing so we don't have a little bit of crosstalk here. But uh, Brian Crawford, our friend from the River's Edge, he was really excited. We mentioned this a few weeks ago about a a no touch um, a no touch trash can, and he sent us a video. Uh, I, I he basically is giving us his review of this no touch trash can. So I, I'm just going to kind of hand it over him to him here for a second, and we're going to take a peek in if I I right from my bathroom. I am right here on the commode, and no. This is not an exotic video. I am here to display to you, my friends, family, and loyal fans, an amazing trash can that I purchased. Oh, I'm so excited. It is motion censored. It is stainless steel. I talked about it on my show, and I am now here to show you how Oh no, that's me. How it works live on Facebook. This is so exciting. It is motion censored. It is stainless steel. It is a trash can. It, I have two of them. I have a kitchen one and the bathroom one. So I'm here. As you can see, I am. He is wearing pants. Okay, I was going to say. He is wearing pants, guys. <laughs> it's okay. In my bathroom. And if you look right here, you will see the commode right there. Stainless steel, nine stars trash can. So He's talked about this every time I go into the studio. I'm going to blow my nose. See right here, you can see a tissue paper. Oh, and we have a demonstration. Have I'm going to blow my nose. I blew my nose, right? And now <laughs> I have this this toilet paper with snot in it. What am I gonna do? I gotta throw it away, but I don't wanna touch the lid of the trash can because that's super, super foul. There's nothing worse than touching the lid of a trash can. You touch the trash can and then the germs just spread all throughout your body. So what do you do? You go the motion sensitive route. So here you go. Right there, stainless steel. Watch my, me wave my hand over it. It lifts up automatically. He's like Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes, <laughs> he's the Jedi of it trash can lids. It's on its own. That's right. I do not have to touch the lid at all. One more time. It will come up on its own. 
And watch this. It closes on its own. It is amazing. That awesome thing of the year. So all you <laughs> awesome cast fans out there, there you have it. I'm already claiming this is the awesome thing of the year. Let's just look at it one more time. It's, just, it's so beautiful. <laughs> look how beautiful this trash can is. You can see like your reflection on it. I really like the wainscoting in this bathroom. It's nice. Motion yeah. sensors. You don't have to touch. Welcome to this old. Anymore. Welcome to this old house. This old awesome, awesome house. Sixty dollars. I am just so elated by this trash can. So thank you all for listening. Thank you, Crystal, for uh, saying that I'm awesome for appreciating good <laughs> there you go. hygiene. All uh, right, thanks, Brian, for sharing that video. Uh, so everybody's gonna get their emotion trash can now, right? That beats the <laughs> foot thing. There's a foot thing like stops working after a while. It, it's it's interesting too because you go into bathrooms all over the place and they have the 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 motion sensor trash can. They have the motion sensor um, soap dispenser, the faucets motion sensor i i'm i am totally in awe that we don't put more motion sense doors in bathrooms so then you could you could technically it go kind of breaks everything doesn't yeah, it kind of break the, well the, now the, i have to open this now i have to pull this open to not, get yeah, out of this this germ warfare bathroom yeah so that's where I, where i'm surprised we haven't seen more there are entire podcasts i've listened to about the foulness and germiness of bathrooms of people just just cannot handle it, and uh, th this is yeah, because like you did all this stuff, you don't have to touch anything except yourself, and and then you get to the door and it just all breaks down. Mm -hmm. so, and I'm, I'm amazed at how many people I see. What's funny, right? Because I see people that look around for a a paper towel, mm -hmm. because a lot of people will actually use the paper towel to then open the door, mm -hmm. and I've actually seen more and more trash cans placed next oh. right next to the door mm -hmm. because people use the paper towel to open the door then throw out the paper towel and leave um but then you have some places that are more conscious about um, recycling and and whatnot so there are no paper towels and it's just the hot air the automatic hot air thing not even one that has a button right you put your hands yeah like the, 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 the dice down and, in yeah the, the the dyson ones or whatever you put your hands down in there and then it cleans them off. But yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen more automatic doors. Oh, that thing is it kind of weird because you put your hands into it. It doesn't feel like the don't touch the sides, don't touch the sides, don't touch the sides, yeah. don't touch the sides, <laughs> right? It, you know, like like it's like like if you touch a side, that's like it's like an Indiana Jones trap, you know, <laughs> uh, or something. So, yeah, there's that. All right. Away from the germ warfare, Amanda Narcissi of uh, Bold Pittsburgh uh, sent along this in the uh, awesome cast group. It is uh, so Yeti. Blue blue microphones. We got some snowballs here. Uh, the Yetis have always been kind of the, uh, if you want kind of a higher end sound, uh, they're good to pick up. I've known a lot of people have had those over the years. But apparently blue microphones is uh, uh, bumping up into uh, uh, a little bit of higher, more pro um, um, look of things here uh, with the Yeti Caster Ultimate Broadcast Studio. Uh, so uh, thanks, Amanda, for, for kind of passing this along. It's a uh, it's a two hundred dollar bundle that sports a custom Yeti microphone, the new Compass Broadcast boom arm, and a shock mount with vintage styling. Uh, so yeah, it's it's the classic the microphone's coming from above you look that you see sometimes in the uh, in in studios and, and radio and everything like that. So um, the one thing I was surprised about this is was there an expectation that only some people were going to put it upside down because the <laughs> logos and everything are then upside down oh, when you a, put it upside down. That's what everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things. Well, it's always weird because there's ones that look like this and you, you talk into like the top of it, you know, and then this is a, this is a Behringer that I have, right? And you talk into the, into the front of it, not the top of it, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but it looks not too much different than the the shores that we got for one of our clients, and it's it's a, it's a top thing, so it's it's interesting. Do they tell you in the book when you buy? Because I'm not like a microphone connoisseur. Do they tell you in the book like where you're supposed to talk? Oh about yeah, uh, when you got the shores that we got, um, there was actually a piece of cardboard kind of wrapped around it that you had to tear off. It says "Speak into here," <laughs> like it literally said "Speak okay. into this part of it" when we <laughs> opened them up. Uh, so which I I think you need because I'm not everybody deals with those levels of of, mm -hmm. of you know things it's like the ones that you guys the shores that you have there those s 58s it's like you have to part like you can't do it off to the side it needs to be really kind of pointed directly at you right 
uh, in order for it to work uh, uh, well. And we speak into the top. Yeah, we speak into the top of them. You speak into the side. I speak into the side. You have the top. I'm the side. You're and if you top. hang it upside down, if you hang it upside down, then everybody's you're speaking screwed. to the bottom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you then you get, then your neck starts to ache. Is what happens. Uh, so, uh, but no, yeah. So it's Yeti Caster is about two hundred dollars, which is not bad. That's really not, not bad, bad for that. All. And it's if it's based on the Yetis, then you, we already know it's a good uh, microphone for that. So, all right, I want to give a shout out to our friend and supporter alex cars uh, alexandercars.com or alexcars.media uh he's been doing some great stuff he's done some t-shirts for us uh, on a few projects he does t- he does some designs and websites he's helped us with indie wrestling.us when we were first launching that and some dvd covers and uh, he's been doing a lot of uh, t-shirts for again podcasts as well as other uh, independent professional wrestlers out there uh on some uh, pretty major platforms uh, put together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print to design projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. And yeah, he's been helping some uh, promotions out there in the California area as well. And really easy to work with um, remotely, as we found out here in Pittsburgh. Uh, he's, of course, in the L.A. area. Hopefully I get a chance to catch up with him here in a couple of weeks when I head out that way. Check him out, alexandercars.com and alexcars.media. That's K-A-H-R-S for cars. And uh, have them uh, give you a hand on your next visual project. All right. Let's get to... Um, Katie, what's going on with my movie pass count? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, big now, and they've been, they've been under some scrutiny yeah. over some comments and the tracking and everything. Yeah. I got really mad when they mislabeled a 3D movie that I went to the other night. Oh, and, I no. could, and I couldn't use it. And I had to go to a whole other theater to watch uh, Pacific Rim. But other than that, I'm hoping this is some good news. Well, well, it's good news if you didn't know it before, because <laughs> now it's about six ninety five a month. Woo! Yeah, and, and that's, that's like that's probably an annual uh, purchase, right? Yeah, if you drop it, if you get to buy an annual purchase, it's eighty nine ninety five mm-hmm. now, and that's it's not a bad. processing fee of six fifty five. That's the same movie pass that people have been using. You know, mm-hmm. you get go watch your movies for you know once you have the pass for free, essentially. Which we use pretty. Mm-hmm. pretty well around here like both missy and i have one and we see basically everything and now dormon is, uh, is starting to accept it oh so, really well we went the first night and when tomb raider came out and it didn't work but uh i'm sure they'll work out the kinks on that so Ooh. but they use fantango over there too and it's all new movies over there uh so how are you thinking about that i know there's some controversy over the hollywood yeah. theater here in the dormont uh neighborhood but uh but but other than that it's cool that it's like Hey, it's a movie right down there, and I'm not going to go see Pacific Rim or Avengers that needs like high end quality, you know, uh, surround sound. But to go see like about any other movie, like you know, Tomb Raider was just fine as far as I was concerned to watch in there. It's a nice old big theater. It's mm-hmm. really cool to to go there in general. So, but it's definitely, I still highly re- despite those flaws, I still recommend Movie Pass. Yeah. So it's I don't know, like I think we're everybody's like, oh my gosh, they're using my data for things. Like, yeah, you didn't think they were gonna use Welcome your data to the for internet. Things. That's your data is the most valuable thing in the world right now. Mm-hmm. That's how everybody targets Do you. You really and- think they're gonna make all that money at seven dollars, ten dollars a month for all the movies that you're watching? Really? Mm-hmm. That's not how they're making money at this company. So it's the market. They're releasing their own movie. Oh really? Their first movie pass ventures movie was um, American American something uh, was just uh, shown at Sundance and it's going to be out I think in June. So I couldn't find a trailer for it yet though. So, uh, but they, Amazon's doing it, Netflix is doing it, they're doing it. Steven Spielberg doesn't think they should get Oscars. I disagree with that, but still. Uh, on the privacy thing, because obviously I, I didn't see it in the rundown, but I think it's a good the whole Facebook accidental did they know did they not know obviously there was a bunch of data that leaked Mm -hmm. and they were they were leaking data even if you agreed to it it was taking your friends data too in this day and age what is your expectation of privacy online like on, on a service like facebook like do you like do you seriously have an expectation of privacy no no and and i think when we talk about what um data analytica did like they obviously they 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 did more with the data than even facebook wanted them to do Mm -hmm. right they 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 
you know, they, they weaponize it, you know, whatever the conversation is, right? But I think... And, and I don't want to get I, into a conversation of right or wrong and who did this or who no, did that. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, in general, what is your expectation of privacy? The vast majority of people that use these things don't understand the expectation of privacy. Mm-hmm. And they're surprised when the, something like this is put in their face. I think. I guess I just look at if Because I see so many... I. I I shouldn't say I see. I hear so many stories of so and so made up a Facebook account and got their some random friend to like them, so then mm. they could see their ex boyfriend, ex girlfriend, ex whatever's yeah Facebook page. Like it's like really like I really have zero expectation of privacy, knowing I guess maybe I'm too knowledgeable about how the things work. Yeah, but. I mean, like, I don't think my, I don't think my, like my mom has that expectation or has, has the expectation of privacy on there. and doesn't realize how much is exposed, but maybe she's not worried about it. Right. Yeah. Um, I use Gmail and it's free and I know it's free because it's not necessarily. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing business private. and I'm doing business on that, mm-hmm. on this free service. Well, technically I kind of pay for Google drive. So does that count? Um, but no, but if I wanted to, really, if I'm really concerned, Mm-hmm. And doing some high value clients, then I go pay for G Suite, mm-hmm. right? Because that ha- then there is an expectation of privacy at that point. If you're not paying for it, manage your expectations. Yeah. Or if you're, wait, wait, let me do, let me pull that back because we're paying for Movie Pass. But understand what the product is but too. I guess look at the differential in what you would normally pay versus what magazines. you're paying. Magazines, you pay for magazines. But even magazines use your demographic data of who buys magazines to sell ads and sell that information. But how do they get that information? Uh, your off name, of a paper magazine? Your name and your address. But if you pick it up your off a newsstand. Your name, your stand. address, your geographic, how many, how okay. many were sold in this geographic location in this newsstand? You know, I'm sure mm-hmm. there's more Guns and Ammo's uh, magazines being sold in uh, Mercer County than in the Pittsburgh area, right? That's mm-hmm. demographics. It's not as, um, it's not as you know, tight demographics as you have with a Facebook, but it still is. It's the mm-hmm. old school way of doing it. You know, same with newspapers too. So, I mean, down to just your address in your neighborhood to that point. So. Chilla, tell me about art. Let's bring so, it back so around. I, so so I, a, I found this totally interesting, and and I actually saw the picture of the of the article. I'm like, oh, that. I like that art. So um, there is an artist going around and hiding secret codes um, to $10,000 worth of cryptocurrency in his artworks. And this person's using actually Legos um, to do as such, but he makes these abstract patterns um, and each, each one represents a private key to a crypto wallet um, that anyone can take the digital cash from. Wow. So I, I I just thought this like I actually looked at these and I'm like, wow, this if I kind of cool. If I cross my, my eyes, wall. is there a sailboat? Yeah, I don't that's and that's what it reminded me of. Um but yeah, so he's taking I just liked the artwork for what it was, but mm. but he's he's gone one step further. And if you can figure out um if you can crack the code behind his his pictures, then you can unlock wallets Worth and a massive $10, electric $10, bill la- uh, later. Well, we're not we, we're not talking about doing the the math that creates cryptocurrency. I guess at this point, it's it's more of breaking of a code thing. Yeah, I guess that's a little different. And he has he has ones he did. It looks like with like an uh, like a light bright. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I just thought it was super cool, very kitschy, fun. But I actually liked the artwork. I wish you could. Well, I guess technically it's it's just a bunch of Legos. If you wanted a copy of this for your house, go buy some colored Legos and put them in the same order. But I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. It's awesome. So Missy shared, um, we, we talked about in the past. So I picked up one of the first automatics, the OBD um, port thing mm-hmm. that kind of like added a lot of data, kind of kind of information to you. <laughs> the, the dog is really loving hanging out by you, Chilla, <laughs> yes. uh, on the pillow behind you. <laughs> we were getting some. It's probably nice and warm. Back. It probably is. If you heard the panting earlier, that's not Chilla. That's not Katie. That's that's Wicked hanging out near. It's Missy. It, it's Missy. <laughs> it's Missy. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyways, um, so so the automatic like you know added a lot of things. You know, kind of beefed if you if you were was fast braking, going too fast. You know, trying to help you be a better driver, give you information, uh, track your mileage, things like that. Very 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 helpful. And you can do some fun things with if this and that. Well, um, and you know what, my my Ford Escape, the uh, 2012 uh, Microsoft Sync feels like it needs to get rebooted every once in a while so the buttons will work again. Uh, so so Ford is actually doing a, um, a, 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 a Ford Smart Link, which is an LT hotspot and smart features for older cars. Kind of the same concept of the, L, of the automatic, right? Which also has, has a few upgrades. Again, it's only for Ford and, and Lincoln uh, devices, but it, it's not terribly inexpensive. It's $17 per month plus installation. Which, of course, you probably have to go to like a Ford dealership themselves to be able to do these kinds of things, right? It's just plugging it into the OBD port. I don't understand yeah, why. Yeah, it's like, what, what kind of installation do you need on top yeah, of that, right? you plug it in. <laughs> so, Like, do they have to have someone activate the the wi- the MiFi? Like, mm-hmm. in it, it's built into it? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't see what the big, yeah. the big deal is. But uh, but yeah, it gives you it gives you the LTE hotspots. Yeah, I never use that. Like I don't even know if they're activated when you get a rent a car. Like when we had the CarPlay, like there was the mm-hmm. OnStar LTE kind of situation. Where, What's that? It, it was just bright. Where I would where I would oh. like where I would like that is because we have tablets that don't have LTE connectivity. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to leverage that, and I can still keep my data stream going on my own device. Um, mm-hmm. So, so that's where I I would really like the LTE hotspot type type device in in the car. Oh no! Uh, yes, and the and it looks like it does. Uh, 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 car health allows the car to be tracked, makes it possible to do things like unlock or lock the car via smartphone app, and apparently just uh, you you come back and you have a hat on. Um, yes, I've been hatted. Oh no! What's going on? Something's going on. There's rustling. There's, shi- there's wrestling. There's, there's wrestling. Rustling. 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 No, <laughs> no, that's later. Um, so yeah, you can check that out. Uh, get, get a bite of data for free. What, what's happening? Why do I have a funny hat on? <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday. It's my. It is my birthday. Yes, we are podcasting on my birthday. Is that why you changed the podcast day? This is my birthday. No, <laughs> yeah. no. It's just like, oh, we got to do the Sunday before. And then I looked at the day. It's like. Oh, that's my birthday. <laughs> what, what else? Oh, no. Is, is this for the, on the show? Sure. Is this happening on the show? Sure. Yes. Also, yeah. I, I'm being handed a box for you guys on audio. Yeah. I got it in a box. What's in the box? Uh, oh, is this in a boxing? Is this silver? Let's gold? see what it is. <laughs> is oh, this good. Silver? First of all, I got another. <laughs> and a Michelangelo keychain. <laughs> a Michelangelo keychain. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow, he, he's very bug eyed. That's <laughs> Mike Lando's been having some special stuff on his pizza, I think. So <laughs> thank you very much, Aaron. And and this is from you too, Katie. Or yeah, uh, I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> you have nothing to do with it. Thank you, Aaron, for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, <laughs> all right. I think that's a good point to end the show. And I have no idea what happened to my noisemaker. The dog's gonna find that later. <laughs> we making some fun noises. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you, for Aaron, for dropping in. With noisemakers. <laughs> uh, Chilla. ChillaTech.net. Chilla on the Twitter. Are you just John's still, Chill on the Facebooks. You still doing anything with that blog? I kind of took off. a break. It kind of fell off. Yeah. But I've actually, but one day I actually have been doing a bunch of time lapse stuff from, from while I'm rebuilding. So one day it will go up there in its entirety. But Awesome. Yep. Katie Dudas. Dutters. Uh, K Dutters on the Twitter. Me. Kate Marie Instagrams. PJ. Fun Instagrams, by the way, over the weekend. Thank you. Yes, I was trying to like just look at ridiculousness that is my life. So on occasion, yes, I, and it's what I've been just doing day in the life of you yeah. know. But like, <laughs> no, this, seriously, this is what I go through. But I get so much reaction from that. Have you got yeah, people yeah. kind of reaching out to you about that? Yeah, they're like, oh my gosh, what is this and what is that? And yeah, like I get like a little bit like you have such a weird day <laughs> sometimes. People think I'm a lot busier than I actually know. Actually. <laughs> Yeah, there's that. So yeah, uh, Evan, that's one. Of, it's an easy way to do that, and people seem to get into it. So, uh, or if you want to just showcase food in your neighborhood. Yeah, why like, not? There's like like the potato. Oh, don't forget your soup. There's soup for you guys. Oh, I have soup. You have soup. Soup. That's your awesome thing of the week is the soup, soup. from from the from the church next door. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you, producer Missy, for 
Well, one being blinded because the sun. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh for my off scheduling for this podcast um and thank you for everybody that's dropped in here on this uh oddly scheduled uh uh uh, uh weekend uh, um of course uh thank you brian uh crawford he's actually been in the chat room uh, he says he's going to check out the yeti microphone and uh he says leave the camera on chilla we all want to see the beautiful pooch behind him and we had a lot of that he was hanging out at one point when you started talking about um privacy uh, i thought the dog reacted to it <laughs> Like, he kind of gave you a look, like, uh-oh. Uh, so, he is hanging out over there. Uh, so, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, being a part of this. Uh, um, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.